Hey, everybody, I'm Kevin Eikenberry, and I'm here to help you reach your potential as a leader and a human being. Welcome to Live with Kevin. It's lunchtime. We might as well have lunch together. At least it's lunchtime for me and for my guest. My guest today is Jones Laughlin. I'll tell you about him in a second, but what we're going to talk about today is what you've probably felt a lot in your life, but especially now, how you are, how are you dealing with all of the overload, all of the different roles and hats that you're trying to wear, and how are you dealing with all that overload in the age of COVID-19? Mm. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about today, and my guest is Jones Laughlin. I uh, reached out to him, and we had a conversation a few days ago, and said, I said, hey, let's do this, and he said, okay. So I'm graciously thank thankful for his graciousness. Uh, Jones is a speaker, a trainer, a um, coach, an author. Uh, he's been at it for a long time, 25 years. And um, so he's not new to this game. He's been thinking about and helping organizations and individuals think about all of this overload for a long time. And uh, he reminded me of where we met um, in Boston at a conference for the the franchisees of choice hotels a number of years ago mm -hmm. and uh, we've bumped into each other off and on ever since and uh, i'm glad that you're with me jones welcome oh well thank you kevin i think yeah i think when we met i actually had a little more hair on my head so it's been a few years and you still got yours so uh, yeah it, it's so been congratulations. A <laughs> but it's better it's better to turn gray than turn loose so that's well, okay I, I take i'm happy i'm ha i'm actually happy that I'm wanting to see a hairdresser. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, okay. Well, that's right, because I have my own clippers. So, uh, <laughs> But no, it's honored to be with you about my favorite subject today as we talk about overload and things. And uh, what a great combination with the work on uh, leadership that you do and, and just to really just kind of have a chat about how do we manage all this stuff that's going on right now. Yeah, and you like to think about that as you call it juggling elephants. You co-wrote a book with that title a number of years ago. So I thought we'd start there. So maybe, is it fair to say that there are perhaps more elephants than ever right now? <laughs> fair or factual might be. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I think I would take it to the next level and say it, it's factual to say that because you know, none of us were sitting around going, oh, I don't have a lot going on in my life. Oh, wait a minute. COVID-19 is making things heavy. We were all so busy prior to this. And then now we've got this new elephant of COVID-19, which has just added so much more, not just physical, but mental, emotional, financial weight to all areas of our lives. So absolutely, it's fair to say. Well, I want to dive into some of that in a second, but I also want to tell all of you, if you're here with us live, if you're with us live, wherever you are joining us on LinkedIn or wherever, Facebook, wherever, uh, share your comments, say hello, tell us where you're from, ask your questions throughout. We can see them. And uh, I also have the lovely and talented Marissa, um, who's watching in and she can get to me and tell me things that I might not be able to see because I'm going to be focusing on our conversation. So uh, by all means, let us know. Say hello. Uh, tell us where you're from. Let us know the questions that you have, and we'll make sure that we address them as we go. So, so Jones, I think you made a really important point, is that you weren't lacking for work or having people not think they were overloaded before this. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I think that when I first started thinking about this conversation, I was thinking, well, uh, I'm trying to work full time and parent full time and uh, maybe still teach school full time. Some of our folks are, uh, some of us are, and that's, that's the elephants, but you're actually, I, I think making a super important point, which is there are other elephants that aren't necessarily a role, but they're a worry there. There's financial stuff. There's our own, however it is that we're dealing with the, our feelings about the virus itself, forget the lockdown, forget all the other, the other stuff, just the virus. Not everyone, has the same set of thoughts about that or the level of worry about it. And that's okay. Right. But I think that's part of it too. Yeah. Oh, exactly. And I think you, you lead to a great, you know, jumping off point. Cause you know, our listeners or people who are watching are going, okay, guys, we know we're busy. You know, we know we're overloaded. What do we do about it? And I think you brought up a great point is that I think you got to start and say, what's heavy to you. 
you know, what is, what is, and of course, you know, a lot of people I'm coaching with, I might sometimes go everything. I'm like, well, that's not helpful because uh, that's overwhelming. What would you say is, is heaviest to you right now? You know, what is, what is the weight that that's most, you know, causing you the most pain or pressure and beginning to start there? Because I think that's from the point where you say, well, this is what's, heaviest to me right now, then you can take steps to do something about it. Uh, there was a great line. Uh, a few weeks ago, I watched the movie, uh, It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Tom Hanks says, uh, uh, Mr. Rogers. And he made this comment about some of these difficult situations we're in in life. And he says, you know, if it's mentionable, it's manageable. And I thought that was a powerful point that our first step should be to say, what is it that's so heavy? And to be get specific, because then if it's mentionable, as they say in the movie, I think it's more, a little more manageable. So, okay. So let's be specific about that. So okay. I'm, I'm, um, you know, in Pasadena, California and I'm, I'm not, but I'm, I'm in Pasadena, California and I'm a 45 year old female, which I'm not. Uh, and I've got three kids at home and I'm trying to work, work full time. And you're saying now I need to mention this and I need to identify it and mention it. Who do I, do I need to talk to? to somebody? Do I need to write it down? Do I have to have a coach or a counselor? Do I talk to my spouse? Like, talk to me about like, cause I buy your point. Right. But how do I, how do I make it mentionable? Once I, once I think about the questions that you asked about what's waiting me, what's, what, what are the weighting matters for me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do, how, once I identify that, what do I do with that first? Yeah. Yeah. Then, then I think, uh, the, the first step, and, and I talk about this in Juggling Elephants, is, you know, we talk about, you know, Juggling Elephants is about managing your work and life like it's a circus. And if it's a circus, you're the ringmaster. And one of the things that, that we talk about in there is that you got to decide what you have control over. And let's go back to your example of the 45-year-old uh, single mom, you know, with her kids at home. Um, you know, what, are, okay, let's just say that her kids are what are driving her her, her nuts, you know, right now, that's okay, her biggest that's, back to, that's not, that's not fancy. That's also probably <laughs> to say. exactly. And, you know, so then she starts by going, well, what am I in control of? I, I you know, I can't send them back to school. I can't put them out in the, the, the yard all day. Uh, you know, those things, what do I have control of? You know, well, I've got control of my response to, you know, my, my, my frustration or my, my anger, or whatever that emotion is of the moment. I've got control over, my schedule, maybe not 100% control over my schedule, but maybe 50% control or 25% control over my schedule. And so then you, once you start identifying what you can can control, then it gives you a little more energy to keep moving. But if you're always focused, well, I can't do this, I can't do that, then it's just like, oh, 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 oh. you know, the elephants just keep getting heavier and heavier. So I think that's the next step in the process. So, but yes, I'm sorry. I mean, let me let me finish and I, just one more thing is yeah. that you asked the question about, do I talk to someone? Absolutely. Um, I like to encourage people, whether it's a professional coach or a friend, find someone who's a couple steps ahead of you, who seems to, you know, have it figured out a little bit more. I mean, in these days of the COVID-19, they, <laughs> they, they, they may they not. Do. Yeah. But it, but it's so easy to find people who are, are where you are and go, yeah, it's bad, isn't it? Well, like, that's not helpful. Um, yeah. But find somebody who seems, and, and a lot of people appreciate that because they're like, wow, I, I'm glad you recognize that in me. Here's, here's where I'm screwing up, but here's where I think I'm making some progress. So you might be able to learn from them. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, that's all right. And so that is, a, and so that is, I mean, cause now my fictional 45 year old Pasadena, California self is saying, well, I don't think I got any, I know anyone that's got it all together. And you're not saying that you're saying mm -hmm. what you, if you, even if you don't know if they've got it together, you need someone that doesn't want to drag, drag you in to the misery loves company game. What you want is someone that will encourage and lift you up, even if they don't necessarily have answers. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because part of this is get, I love what you say, lift them up. Part of this is getting some more emotional energy uh, and mental energy to have the confidence to deal with it. And if you don't have that, it's really hard to make progress. So you're exactly right. Now, a lot of people have been big fans over the years of John Wayne and John Wayne's fine actor, lots of good movies. Here's the thing that here's where John Wayne failed us. He made it look like we're supposed to all be able to figure it all out by ourselves. <laughs> and oh, you're so right. The way the real world works, and what right. Jones, what you're saying is exactly right. We've got to have a support system. We got to find that. We need it more than ever. I want to go back to something else that you said a couple of minutes ago, and underline it, highlight it for anyone who's a leader who's listening here. When you said 
uh, you encouraged us to make sure that we're finding and gaining a sense of control. Even if we can't control everything, we can control some things. And the more that we recognize what we can control, it helps us all the way around. So true, 100%. So as leaders, I would challenge you to remember that and to recognize that you have in your control the ability to give your team members more influence on things. They need to know there are questions that they have that they have that you don't have answers for and you're igno- and you're not answering because you don't have full answers. They need to know you're thinking about. Uh, you need to let people know what they can do about their schedule and if they can be flexible with their schedule right now and and give them that control. If you know that you're coming back to the office and a third of the people are coming back to the office for re-entry in on July the 17th, tell people because then they can start to put something around that and it, and it gives them some boundaries to start to work with. Comments, thoughts? Oh, oh, I, I love that because what you're also doing is giving those people, like you said, it's a sense of control and a sense of normalcy, a sense of expectation, a sense of anticipation. Uh, because in this swirl that so many of us are in, there's so much uncertainty, we can't anticipate, we can't plan. But if you give people information um, that, okay, here's what we know and here's what's going to be happening, okay, well, I can begin to plan. I know what next month begins to look like a little bit. So now I can begin to plan for what I might need to do with my children. And and that sense of normalcy and a plan is huge. I love what you said, Kevin, about you know what leaders need to do. And even some some organizations are are determining that there that there are some there are some criteria that will allow people to stay home. And if you don't have mm-hmm. childcare, back to our fictional Mm -hmm. Uh, Penny in Pasadena person. Um, The reality is that she may say, I don't know what I'm going to do with my kids. But if if the organization is saying, that's okay, Penny, we're going to work with you because you don't have a way to deal with child care, then tell her that. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. She may, they still may be driving her crazy, but but tell her that. Give her something to, to work with and work from. I think it's right on. Anything else that's driving, before we start talking about action, before we start talking about what we can do, and by the way, everybody feel free to send us your questions and comments. We'd love to have them. Um, but anything else about what's what's making this even harder or what's driving the overload today? Sure. I think one of the biggest things, we're having to make so many more um, choices. Life is not on automatic. Uh, you know, we all prefer schedules. We all prefer things being consistent. Uh, and now we have to make so many more choices. I mean, if 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 Penny from Pasadena wants to go to the grocery store, she has about eight or ten more choices that that she has to make about going to the grocery store than she did before COVID-19. She's got, okay, do I have my mask? Do I have my hand sanitizer? Okay, okay, wait a minute. Did I stay six foot away from that person? I mean, it's exhausting, Kevin. I mean, even here in my small town where I live in North Carolina, if I'm going to the post office or something like that, there's extra decisions that have to be made. And, And we don't like having to stop and think. We just want to go get it done. And so I think one of the things that's driving it is just that we are making, having to make more real time decisions and we're tired. Yeah, we can't operate uh, uh, on autopilot. In other words, from our habits because yeah. the habits have all been disrupted, right? So one of the things that make habits helpful is they don't, we don't have to think about them. So they don't take any energy. And you're, what you're yeah. saying is the, the habits disrupted. So mm-hmm. now I, it, it has to be about intentional choice and, and such. And that's important. I think that's, you know, people are talking a lot about um, the exhaustion from all the screen time mm-hmm. and, and all of that. And and I have to say that for me, I'm not really experiencing that. Maybe it's because I've done so much of this already for so long, mm-hmm. but I think that's the difference or that might be the difference yeah, that yeah. I've done this a lot for a long time in a bunch of different venues, most every day, some way or another. For mm-hmm. others of you who that's new, there's not habits around it. Mm-hmm. And so you're still, there's other potential causes of the exhaustion that comes with, you know, um, Zoom gloom, as I heard someone call it the other day. <laughs> but, but the reality is that um, at some of the, some of that will get better simply as you create new sets of habits that you can do. You know how to log in. You know how to do it. You know how to move mm-hmm. the screen so you don't have to look at everybody's face if you don't want to, mm-hmm. and only the speaker and whatever else that might be, right? You learn mm-hmm. how to not look at yourself 
and get freaked out by whatever uh, and all those things, right? So, yeah, yeah. And can I, I'd love to piggyback on something you just said there too, Kevin, is that, that yeah, when you begin to say, what do I want from this situation? Just like you mentioned a moment ago, I don't want to see everybody on the screen. I don't want, you start begin to filter out the things that you don't want. And then if you've got a sense of a level of control, you say, okay, well, what do I want? You know, what would be helpful to you? I, I love it when when leaders and managers right now, and I get this this feedback from some of the folks that I'm talking to, you know, it's just, you know, my manager's checking on me every day and they're saying, how can I help? Not if you need help, let me know, but how can I help? And, and, and you know, and, and say, you know, I'm telling them, I'm like, well, great. That's what they're there for. That's what they get paid for, you know, but, you know, really helping people to begin to say, what do you want? What would be helpful? And and helping to drive that and give them the tools to do that, I think is really important uh, to begin to develop, as you said, those habits and those consistencies that will allow them to go, Whew, today wasn't a tsunami. It was only a hurricane, you know, or, or something. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, the other interesting thing that you say about that is that, you know, we're going to, you're saying, and I would agree that the leaders that are doing that, are coming are having having the right intention about that. I've said a lot to leaders uh, around remote work for years about the fact that what we want is for people to feel like we're checking in, not checking up. And I love the idea of how can I help because that really is a checking in question. Now, occasionally, sometimes, depending on <laughs> Pasadena or George and Georgetown or wherever, uh, the reality is if you 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 may perceive that as still as checking up, but the reality is assume positive intent. And if you're the leader, set an expectation about how often you're going to have conversations so that people at least know, well, he's not just doing it because he's wondering. He's not just doing it to see if I'm eating bonbons. He's doing it because he said he's going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I love that. And, and and Kevin, I know you talk about this too, and it comes to helping with that work overload. And we could talk about some of those others, but you know, people right now, especially when they're working remotely, they, they, they want to work by outcomes. They, they really do because that gives them the opportunity to be able to flex their schedules and figure out when stuff needs to be done. But there's still some leaders and manager, well, not leaders, but managers out there that I'm hearing that are still working their people from the standpoint, well, you know, what times are you going to be on today? You know, or when are you going to be, you know, and it's like, no, 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 no. You can't manage by hours. You know, it didn't work. It didn't work in the physical workspace. It's even worse now. So if that manager's clear about with that person about the outcomes they're looking for, then that allows me as Penny and Pasadena to go, okay, well, I might get up at 5 a.m. And, and work on some things. And then I'm going to spend some time with my kids for a few hours. Then I'll, you know, I'll start working again. But you know what? I'll still meet the deadline for the outcomes they're looking for. So I think that that's so important. Two important points there. One is that that if we as leaders, we need to be clear about that on the front end. And, and if you mm -hmm. haven't been, you still can be, right? So mm -hmm. um, you talk about outcomes right on. I think I call talk, focus on accomplishment, not activity. Not yeah. about being busy. It's not now. If they have a job where they have to be customer facing on a phone, then they, you got to have schedules. Yeah. But beyond that, you can do exactly what Jones is saying. And so, if you're here as a team member, you can't go scold the boss, but you can ask the question about can we set some boundaries and parameters around the schedule so that I can make sure I'm meeting the outcomes which I know you need and meet the outcomes that I have in the rest of my life right now, which is kind of in a circus, right? Um, <laughs> exactly. To your, to your earlier point. So if you're a leader, if you haven't done that, have those conversations. If you're a team member, you know, have that conversation. You can have that in a way that still holds true the values of what the, the manager needs, which is for you to reach outcomes. So if you lead with, I still want to make sure I'm meeting the outcomes and doing all those things. How much flexibility can I have to get there with my calendar or my schedule, mm. chances are um, you're gonna you're gonna have a fruitful conversation. Exactly. No, I, I love that, Kevin. Very simple process to use to help people get clarity so that they can figure out what their day needs to look like. Excellent. Yeah. So before we started, when we were in the green room, so to speak, we were in the same room. But uh, when, before we before we hit, we went live, uh, you said to which I was mentally clapping. Um, and let's leave people with some very actionable stuff. Let's leave them with, um, if they've chosen to invest their time with us, whether it's live or they're watching us later, mm -hmm. what can we do for them 
Uh, what can we get them around some specific advice? They've got all these weighty issues. They got elephants. Mm-hmm. They're juggling. They've got overload in their work. They've got overload in their life. It's all met, matched together. They don't even know what day of the week it is. What specific advice do you have for them? And I started to write this question when you got here, and I had written, "What specific advice do you have for people in, in today?" And you said, "No, how about in the next thirty minutes?" I'm like, right on, man. So <laughs> where do people start? Where sure. Start? Oh, oh, I, I love it. Do we have thirty minutes for this part? But no, I, here's the first place to start. No, they get they out. Of- <laughs> That's right. We don't want to add an elephant to their schedule. You start with a piece of paper. OK, they start with a piece of paper. They can just get out a piece of paper and they, they take a pen or a pencil. There you go. There you go. And you draw three rings on that on that piece of paper. And and one ring is labeled work. One ring is labeled self and one ring is labeled relationships. If you really want to speed up, put W, S and R and that'll speed you up even more. Work, self and relationship. And then you stop at yourself and you go. How am I doing in each of these three areas of my life? Because in juggling elephants, that's what we suggest is that you have three. There you go, Kevin. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, you have three rings to your life that all of your physical and emotional and mental and even financial energy is put into. You've got a work ring, a self ring, and a relationship ring. And you start by saying, where do I feel most overloaded right now? Now, which one of these three rings? Is it work? Is it self? Is it relationship? Um, and then that process of, okay, within that work ring, what's so heavy? If that's the one that they're challenged with. Okay, what's in my control? What are, What's a step I could take? What's a right next step? What's one thing I could do to help with the overload there? And then they you know begin to action on that. Maybe they're looking at it and they're going, I'll tell you what, what I recognize right now when I see these three rings, I'm overloaded in the self ring. I just feel like there's no time for me. Okay. What does a right next step look like? What are you in control of? Are you in control of 15 minutes of your day? Great. What could you do in 15 minutes that would renew your mental, emotional, physical energy? Have you got 15 minutes? And even Penny from Pasadena says, yeah, I think I could crank out 15 minutes. And Um, that's probably not on Facebook. (laughs) Exactly. Because... Yeah. Notice what I said. It's something that would physically, mentally, and emotionally pour into you, would be, would add to your energy. You're right. Not take away, uh, you know, because that's, that's what happens so much on social media. And so that's where I would start is those, those three rings is, is starting there and going, where do I need the most help right now? And what does a step forward look like? I think that's one thing kind of in conjunction with that is, you know, what are you in control of with your schedule? Is it, is it an hour a day? Is it two hours a day? Start looking for the little pieces. Um, don't try to figure out, okay, how am I going to work for four hours straight? No. How can you carve out 30 minutes or an hour of really deep work? And where did that, where does that fit in your day? And then communicating that out to the people you're in the house with, to the, to the rest of your team saying, you know what? I really want to focus better. And so I'm going to be blocking out nine to 10 or one to two or whatever it might be. Um, you know, I, if it's okay. I'd like not to have meetings during that time, but it's beginning to take more of that control so that you can, you know, move forward. So those are two quick suggestions. I'm sure you've got some to, as well, Kevin. Well, I just want to give one based on your first one for okay. leaders. So if you're a leader, here's the advice I would give you. You know, Jones used the example of if maybe it's the self ring and that person that says, I, I don't have any time for me. Well, there's a lot of people in the world right now that, have a lot of time for them, like that, like they're sort of not knowing what to do with some of their time, right? And maybe they're not here right now because overload didn't ring their bell. But the point that I'm that I'm making for you as a leader is not everyone on your team is in the same place right now. You've got Penny from Pasadena with three kids trying to work and manage all those things. You've got other people whose spouse is also working from home and that's causing challenges. You got other people whose spouse is on furlough. You have other people whose spouse um, is working on the front lines and that, and, and you've got some people who are, have preexisting conditions and are worried about the virus itself. And you've got some people, um, who are living by themselves in an apartment with a very different situation as a leader. My advice to you in the next 30 minutes is reach out to one of the members of your team. Do you know where they all are? Not at a high level. Well, I know they live alone, but are you, practicing your empathy with them to understand where they are. Listen, if you will take the time, what can I do to help? But also just be empathetic with your team members. You're going to help with their overload Mm. instantly. 
Yeah. Because they will know that they're being acknowledged. They will know that they're being heard. And yeah, maybe you can help them in a tangible way with something on their schedule or whatever. But if you just do those things and are, and are really checking in, you, you'll be helping everybody on your team. Oh, uh, yes. And, and Kevin, just to add to that, especially if when you're checking in with them, you're that authentic, uh, transparent type of leader who says, here's what I'm noticing. You know, out of you know, it might be out of our time together today. That that person who checks in with the, that team member says, you know, I was just on a um, a LinkedIn Live thing. We we're talking about you know uh, our life, and I recognized, wow, I, I I'm really struggling in the you know self ring or the you know I've got some work to do here. And that other person goes, oh, it's kind of like C.S. Lewis. What you too? You know that kind of thing. I didn't Is that, think that would be you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and so all of a sudden that person goes. Oh, I just felt like it was just me that I'm, I'm not capable of handling this. And when that leader says that to them, oh, you're right. The empathy and the trust that begins to be built with that other team member because they're going, yeah. we're in this together. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. hundred um, percent. Jones Laughlin. Thank you, sir, for being here. What will they find if they go to this website? Oh, if they go to the website, first of all, you're going to find out more information about me, which that's not as important because you need help. You need tools. Uh, but if you go there, I have all kinds of uh, downloads that they can actually get uh, 31 ways to, to get stuff done right now, uh, how to work remotely. There's lots of resources there related to COVID-19. Also some video footage there, uh, of different topics uh, on my YouTube channel, which is just youtube.com forward slash Jones Laughlin. Um, I have over 200 videos that are three minutes or less related to time management management, work-life balance, uh, but you can get there from starting at joneslawflin.com, but all designed to help you with the struggle of too much to do, because that's that's always been true. It's really true right now, Kevin. Hey, well, now we've got people coming in uh, and making comments, thanking us for the attention, the variety <laughs> of situations people are in, and, uh, and we're linking up where people can get a hold of your book. That's all oh, wow. being happening there for people on LinkedIn and elsewhere. So, um, thank you everybody for coming. Mm -hmm, uh, we've absolutely. got more of these in the works. Next week is a holiday week and next week is my birthday week. And next week I'm finishing the manuscript of the next book, which is, here it is, uh, put up there in the corner, the long distance teammate. So next week, I'm not sure they'll be alive, but there'll be more coming. I promise you all. And, um, and Jones, thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure to have you. Of course, I knew we'd have a good time and I knew we'd do something of value for folks. So thanks for joining us. Oh, my pleasure, Kevin. Thanks for the work you're doing too around leadership. I just so appreciate how you're creating leaders that really are making a, a, a positive impact on those they're leading and in their organization. So, and happy early birthday. I understand you turned 50. Um, but yes, why? Well, yes, I am. Turning 50. <laughs> well, um, uh, well, thank you. Thank you everybody for being here. We will be back. So come back and join us. Follow Jones on LinkedIn too. You got to do that. And uh, we'll talk to everybody soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.